Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer with For and From St Catherine's beginning of another week. Last week we were looking at the letters of John and on Saturday in John's second letter he reminds the lady to whom he's writing that you've got to stick to the basic message of Jesus. So I thought well for this week let's do that, let's look at the basic message of Jesus and go back to the on and off series we've had of Jesus's parables. We started at the very beginning of his ministry, we're now at the cusp of his arrival in Jerusalem. By the end of this week Jesus will be in Jerusalem and there's a whole another set of parables, a feel of parables. But today's is, is an optimistic one, today's is an encouraging one, although it has an interesting challenge as we go, which I'll unfold as we go. To begin with, join me in our opening prayer. And so to our reading, which today comes from Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 19 is Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, which we celebrate every year at Palm Sunday. So this is just the day before. So he's really close. Busy day, that day, climbing into Jerusalem. But that's another story. Intriguingly, in this particular case, and there's no other case of it in any of the other Gospels, Luke, the writer of the Gospel, gives us his opinion on what the parable is about before he tells the parable. It's the only time he does it. Also, quite unusually, at the end of the parable, Jesus says why he told the parable and what the point was. He didn't often do that. Normally, Jesus just told the parable and left it. But this particular parable has Luke's introduction as to this is what the parable is about. It has Jesus's conclusion. This is what the parable is about. The intriguing thing is they say something different. I'll flag that up now. So listen carefully, note Luke's introduction, note Jesus' conclusion, but it's the story itself we're going to look at. Here it comes. Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and not lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused. But later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I'll grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by her continually coming. That's the end of the parable. And then the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? This is Jackie's cat, Tinker. Uh, he's a white cat lying on a white blanket, so he's not entirely easy to see. But if I talk too loudly, I'll probably wake him up and then he'll get up and walk off. Anyway, at about six o'clock, half past six every morning, Tinks walks into the bedroom and mews very loudly, demanding his breakfast. And he stays there, mewing very loudly until someone attends to him. Before lockdown, when Jackie was for a couple of months a week in Oxford and I was on my own, I was the chief cat carer and Tinks would arrive at half past six in the morning and mew loudly, at which point I would shove him out of the bedroom door and close it firmly and go back to bed. He would then sit outside the bedroom door and mew very loudly, uh, at which point I opened the bedside table drawer, got out my earplugs, put my earplugs in and went back to sleep and Tinks eventually got fed when it was convenient to me, or if he managed to mew very successfully and very loudly and very continuously, I would reluctantly get out of bed, go downstairs, feed the creature, then go back to bed. 
in Jesus's parable, the judge is kind of like me in the case of Tinks. The judge doesn't care for the woman. He's not interested in her case. He eventually gives the justice just to shut her up so he can have some peace. That's the story that Jesus tells. And Luke, in his account, says, well, this is a parable about, about being persistent in your prayer. Be like the widow. Just keep asking God, keep asking God, keep asking God, and eventually God will grant your request. No, Luke, you're wrong. I'm sorry. Who am I, Vicar of Neesden, to correct one of the writers of the four Gospels? But no, Luke, you're wrong. And Jesus himself says you're wrong. Jesus is saying God isn't like the judge. God isn't like Rob Harrison when it comes to cat feeding early in the morning. God is, is like Jackie because Tinks is her cat and she loves her cat and she cares for her cat. And when he comes upstairs and mews for his breakfast, she gets up and she goes down and she feeds him. She may not want to, but she does. She does it because she cares for him. And Jesus is saying to us, that's what God's like. God cares for you. God doesn't answer your prayers to shut you up. God doesn't sit there thinking, oh, no, come on, try a bit harder, work a bit harder, pray a bit longer. Maybe pray for this three times a day for the next five months and eventually I'll do it. No, 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 no. That's not what God's like. When we pray to God, we pray to someone who is not in any way like the unjust judge. We pray to a God who loves us, who will, to use Jesus' term, give us justice speedily. So Luke is wrong. It isn't a prayer telling us that we have to be, uh, the parable telling us we have to be persistent in our praying. It is a parable telling us that God loves us and when we need his help, we will get it. So, be assured. You don't have to nag God. He loves you. He will get up. He will go downstairs and he will meet your need. In that parable and in the comments that Jesus makes after the parable it's all about prayers for justice. The widow has a justice related cause and Jesus when he says God will not be slow, God will be quick to bring justice to those who need it. So this isn't necessarily instruction about prayers for lottery numbers, bargains and parking places. This particular bit of teaching of Jesus is about when we are praying on issues of justice and when justice is in the air, when injustice is in the air, then that is high priority for God. God is a God of justice and he will always hear those cases swiftly. In the prayer we're about to pray, the Lord's Prayer, I think that's all about the bit that says your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If we're seeking God's justice, we have his ear. Let's pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And that just about brings us to the end of our daily prayer today. With all due respect to 
St. Luke, this is not a parable telling us that we need to keep at it with God until we've persuaded him to give us what we want. That is not the point of this parable. Right at the beginning of Jesus's ministry in the Sermon on the Mount, three years before this parable was told, Jesus said to them, when you pray, don't be like the Gentiles. Why? Because they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Don't be like them. For your father knows what you need before you ask it. Jesus is never telling us that we should keep on at God until we get our way. He's always telling us that God loves us and knows us and that's the foundation of our prayers. The prayer of the grace, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. Thank you for your company. Tomorrow, another parable and one which is as elegant as it is brief. If you want to know what it is, join me tomorrow.